uh, we're out uh, in a secret spot on public land in, in Michigan somewhere. And um, we're participating in the public, the hunting public, uh, public land challenge. And uh, we have a pile of rain coming in. It's opening day of uh, Michigan's bow season. And with that rain comes opportunity. And I think there's some tips. I have three tips for hunting rainy weather whitetails that I think you can practice. And we're hoping to uh, take advantage of all three of those today. Um, first tip, I love hunting holes in the rain. And so Dylan and I have been studying the, the forecast right now. We're looking at the radar and we're really looking for that opportunity where we have several hours, not just a half hour, an hour, but really looking for where we have several hours where we can go sit and, um, and we have rain on either side to where deer can recognize pouring rain now, dry now, there's rain coming, they can feel that moisture in the air, the wind changing, and what a great time to hunt during that hole in the weather. Now, it could be that the rain is ending for good, it could be that it's right before the rain's coming, and it could be a giant hole in between, but hunting those holes is an exceptional opportunity. Now, with that hunting in the holes of, of the rain, I think you have a great opportunity to go into your stand. You can go into your stand right when it's still raining, and might be coming down hard, light, whatever it is. But the added noise of the rain and the sight of the rain and the fact that, that rain can wash away your scent gives you a great opportunity to slip into a stand undetected. And so when you add that, combine that with your ability to hunt those holes and see those in the forecast, then you have a great opportunity. Now I really urge you to study the radar when it comes to hunting the holes in the rain. And, and really looking at those holes. If you go by the hourly forecast or any type of forecast, then I think a lot of times you can be misled. You know, they're looking at percentages of chance. Uh, today we have a bunch of rain sliding just on the north side of us, really close. And so the weatherman might predict on an hourly forecast that we're getting 50, 60% rain. Now, you know, wouldn't it be great to be a weatherman? You can be 40, 50% right or wrong, whatever. But the point is, is that 50, 60% is a high percentage, but still it's only 50, 60%. Um, it could be that that rain misses us completely. Bottom line, learn to watch your radar. Learn to see if the moisture is expanding and you're starting to see yellows and reds pop up into that green as it's sliding across. And you can see with the moisture that we have currently that it's gonna expand and probably hold and you're gonna get a lot of rain. Or you can look and see if there's a pile of rain coming and it's dissipating as it gets closer and closer and diminishing. Those reds and yellows are turning into dark green, into light green, and then just about being eliminated by dry air before it even comes in. Today we can see it's moist air, it's expanding, we're going to get hit with some rain. Could be on the north side of us, but we're really looking out those holes and those solid holes. There's a big hole over Lake Michigan right now that's coming towards us. So we're hoping to take advantage of that. So learn to watch the radar, combine that with those holes in the forecast. Now, like I said, we're hunting public land right now. And I scouted this area briefly. Um, there's a fresh scrape over there, a couple rubs. And we're just not hearing, seeing the white tail movement now. Granted, it is in the 70s today. It's really hot, it was 70 at daybreak. So really warm weather for this time of year. Um, it's going to be a high of 58 tomorrow, 52 later in the week, so weather's really changing. I love hunting this, these conditions because if we're on public land, now private land it's tough because if you have a 40 acre parcel you're hunting and you're locked into those stand locations, um, pretty tough to go set up somewhere else depending on your winds. But we're on public land, I have another setup I'd like to go exercise. So for us to get down out of our climbers here, make a little noise, and get over to another spot, I believe the rain not only gives us some cover when we're moving, but it also washes away our scent. It allows us to get over to that other setup and make a little bit of noise, have our scent washed away, our sound forgotten about, and I believe that we can get into that other stand location with a lot lower impact because of, because of the rain and using that rain to our advantage. So we are gonna do that. We're gonna take the time to move. Um, it's just about to rain, so we're gonna move in the rain and, uh, and we'll get over there and hopefully 
we can do so without spooking deer. Now third, of course I love hunting the holes in the weather. I love being able to move and, and, that, and that can apply to going and grabbing an SD card, um, getting into the woods for a little bit more invasive trail cam setup, but the ring gives you a lot of options, obviously, for accessing stands, getting trail cam cards, and moving. Third, and this is really important, and this is something that I hope to be able to take advantage of today, um, is if we shoot a deer, and we end up shooting a buck out here, and you know, again, we're trying to hunt the holes in the rain. We're not, we don't want to sit out here in the downpour, thunder and lightning. I don't want to do that. I don't see the deer move a lot. But they do move in a light rain, especially when they're coming in. They're hitting these acorns that are falling all around us right now. And the rain's going to push more acorns down, too. I believe deer know that. All right? they, they sense that. But if we shoot a deer and we get a bad shot, for example, it runs off a certain direction, the worst thing that we can do is say, it's raining, the rain's gonna wash away the blood trail, so we gotta get on that deer right away. Folks, if you have a bad hit, if you have a liver shot, especially a low liver shot, a gut shot, an intestine shot, and you push that deer just because it's raining, then you're gonna lose that deer. And now you don't have a blood trail. And when deer run, think about it, how far do deer run when you push them? I know when I push them, maybe, Maybe um, I'm out of the ordinary, but when I push deer, I'm sure they run at least a quarter mile. They're not running 100 yards away and just standing and looking at you and going back to their business. They run a long ways, maybe even a half mile in open ag settings or big open uh, hardwood settings like we're, we're hunting here. So they run a long ways. So if you shoot a deer and you get a bad hit, you know rain's coming, you have a direction. If you have cover like we do here, there's gonna be cover somewhere within two to 300 yards. If that deer is mortally wounded, that buck's gonna go or that doe's gonna go to that thick cover within two to 300 yards. And I found at least 90% of the time, going back many years and a lot of deer, that that deer mortally hit will run to the first cover, just about regardless of the hit, and it's gonna die in that location. And so if you have the direction that it ran and you're marking that from the stand, you're paying attention, you know you got a bad shot. It doesn't hurt to let that deer go. Let him lay down. Don't push him. Let him die. You come out the next day, and the majority of the time, I found at least 90% of the time, that deer is gonna be in that direction within two to 300 yards, and you will find that deer. It's gonna take a little bit extra searching, but if you go push that deer in the rain or in the snow, 90% of the time, you're not going to find them. It's going to go a half mile, quarter mile, whatever it's going to go, and you're not going to find them. So we're hoping to take advantage of a hole in the weather where we can actually say we can hunt here, we can have a good shot, long shot, hopefully the deer dies or we hear it fall, and, and we'll, we'll hopefully do that uh, this evening. But um, think about that. When you're going in, when you're shooting a deer, think about if it's mortally wounded or not and really not pushing it because there's rain or snow. So there's some rainy weather, whitetail tips. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, today we're hunting out here. This is probably my one day um, that, uh, that I'm gonna hunt in this challenge. And, uh, and, and we're gonna take advantage of this rain and the weather that's coming through. And there's always opportunity. It doesn't matter if there's a lot of rain coming, a lot of snow coming. Um, you do the same in the snow. I like to hunt the holes. And, uh, and if you take advantage of rainy weather whitetails, rainy weather whitetail hunting uh, this fall, I know that you can uh, find some success. And please keep in mind if you shoot a deer, uh, and always, you really never want to push that deer. Um, you're you're going to lose that, that uh, challenge more often than not. We're hunting in the public land challenge today. And... Uh, we're, we're going to move our stand here pretty quick and hopefully hit a hole this afternoon. Some thunder and lightning might be coming later and we're certainly going to get out of the stand before that time. Enjoy the season and enjoy hunting around the rain and uh, using the rain to access, pull SD cards and, uh, and certainly allowing that buck time to die. If he's mortally wounded, you already have a direction. You'll find that deer 90% of the time to sneak out of the stand and good luck this season.